Hey guys, today we have a ZVP. This is going to be a uh, platinum slash diamond level uh, ZVP submitted by Rattlehead. Uh, he's going to be our Zerg player in the lower right corner. He is platinum currently, and our diamond Protoss is Blue Cross. Um, when I was streaming a little while back, he said, Hey, can I send you a replay and have you critique it? And I said, Sure, do you mind me casting it? And here we go. Uh, on that note, if anyone wants me to critique their games, as long as you don't mind me turning it into uh, YouTube and uh, making five cents worth of YouTube ad revenue off of you, uh, exploitation is what I do best, so let me know. I'll be happy to do that for you. All right, so Rattlehead uh, said this was a Swarm Host game, so we'll go ahead and spoil that right away because I love spoilers. So we're going to be looking to see how that plays out. Now, the first thing that already comes to mind is let's look at our map. This is not our Swarm Host friendly map. In fact, it's so bad that I can't remember the name of it because I vetoed it right away. Actually, Belshir Vistage, I want to say. Um, it's just an all-around bad Swarm Host map. Great Muta Ling Bling map. Uh, great Roach Run By map, but Swarm Host, not so much. Alright, so we'll see what we see from our early game. Not too much to analyze. I don't know if, maybe I'll start zooming through the first, uh, you know, three or four minutes of a lot of these games that I cast from... Uh, you know, other people's gameplay, and maybe even some of my own, just because it feels like the early game is so figured out. It's not like there's a lot to talk about. So, in fact, I'm spending time right now talking about how there's not a lot to talk about. That's a bad sign. So we've got a 14 pool coming down from Rattlehead. It looks like he's going to try and sneak by and get that hatchery, but it's not going to happen. Blue Cross is on top of it. So this is where we kind of fall back into me saying, Ugh, should have had a V8. No, should have had an 11 over pool. That's what I meant to say. And so this is going to be a bit of a dance here for a while. We'll see how long this is able to be blocked. Ooh, the pylon. So much mana. All right, so we definitely know how this plays out. Rattlehead immediately having to go ahead and take his third. And this third, um, it's interesting. It's more vulnerable, but it's significantly less likely to be scouted. Still, I'd say more and more we're going to see people, uh, see Protoss players just checking it to make sure. Actually, it looks like that drone's just going to hang out and uh, <laughs> juke back. That's interesting. Kind of a cool little uh, metagame play there by Rattlehead. He, I think he actually even showed that his probe was heading over there. Oh, okay, now I am thoroughly confused. Committed to the four Zerglings and going to just pull back. Now... I would say if you're going to go for the pool before hatchery and it's not an 11 over pool, you're going to have to be prepared to go ahead and drop that hatch. Uh, the Overlord did in fact see that we had a um, Forge Fast Expander, or at least it was in position in time to. It scouted a low ground pylon. Optimally we want this Overlord to head straight into the natural to confirm Forge Expand, which then frees you up to go ahead and take that third before natural. Uh, so I'd say the first critique I can make here is if you are going to go 15 pool, or in this case 14 pool, before hatchery, you want to make sure to be willing to go ahead and drop that third before natural. Because your overlord, especially on uh, two-player maps, it's going to arrive in time to confirm it. This zergling run by, mm, looks like it's going to pay off. I'd say that's kind of one of those that it, you can take it or leave it. Uh, definitely could have focused there on probes and, and gotten a little more out of it, but this is going to be fine as long as it's well managed two probes thus far. I'd say even two probes for six zerglings is not a bad trade. I'd like to see it go up to three probes just to make sure, but given the mining time as well, I'd say this is already broken even. So, going ahead and allowing this to pay for itself since we had to commit to six zerglings. Now, these just hanging out nomin on the Nexus, they're not going to get too terribly much done. Optimally, we would like to see them denying probes the moment they come out, because you can catch those probes, um, especially if you just kind of shuffle along with them as they move towards the mineral line, you'll get a couple free hits. But it takes really close timing there. Alright, so we are getting that third down, and especially with where I'm seeing now fast third from Rattlehead, I, that really confirms that we wanted that third before natural, so that uh, we didn't float up to 500 minerals. So, given that that's the intention, that's going to be the way to go. Now, the mineral, the drone count is super, super low. So I'd say that's the next thing we want to look at, because we're gassing up here really early for only 21 drones. Um, interesting. Okay, so yeah, this this is something that I can I can talk about all day long, but I don't want to harp too terribly much. Still, Rattlehead wanted critique, so let's, let's talk about this. Whenever you go... Well, first off, let's think about the build. Whenever you go 15 pool, 
you're first off relying on a heavy drone count because you're taking a faster third, particularly in the case of a pylon block. So at seven minutes, I'd like to see about 50 drones. This is indicative of a couple things. First off, the gas was way too early. Uh, I'm not going to go back and check what it was, but suffice to say it was too early. Um, it looks almost like Rattlehead was going for a gas timing that's more in line with two base play, but instead going for a three base open. Uh, that, con considering that we don't see minerals floating, indicates that he's kind of crippled his economy by getting such an early gas and wasn't able to capitalize on the advantage that 15 pool typically has uh, in terms of drone count over 11 over pool. So we kind of went two directions here. First off, we went 15 pool, but then we didn't capitalize on it by staying mineral only for a little bit longer. And then we got the fast gas, but then we also took a quick third, which spent a lot of minerals that should have been drones. And that all kind of conspired against us to result in 34 drones at 8 minutes rather than uh, a healthy 60 or so. So we have the quick uh, infestation pit, but I don't foresee uh, Rattlehead being able to really capitalize on it. Sure, he's going to get these um, third and fourth gas saturated, but at only 38 drones, he's not going to have the minerals to crank out the swarm hosts or queens that he needs to muster any kind of a push. So... Um, Right out the gate, I can say, regardless of anything we see with this game moving forward, the biggest improvement you can make to your play, um, Rattlehead, is just make sure that your build is deliberate and the economy of that build is deliberate. Set a benchmark, uh, and if, if you prefer 15 pool over 11 over pool, then that's fine, but set a benchmark for the amount of drones you must reach by 8 minutes. Practice it against the AI until you can hit that benchmark. I would say 60 by 8 minutes is a pretty good standard, uh, especially for 15 pool, but 11 over pool can also do it. Then go ahead and up the ante a bit and try and set a benchmark for when your layer finishes. Try and still meet that benchmark while hitting that drone count. Um, because this is indicative that you don't quite have a standardized opening and you don't have standardized droning. Uh, you don't know where you should be at in a given time with your drones. And this is just going to impact every other aspect of your play. I mean, we could then watch the remainder of this game and see perfect swarm host management. And it's kind of moot because you have a quarter to a third of the swarm host you should have had because the opening was so far behind where it needs to be. Like here we're at 10 and a half minutes and if we were watching Stefano we would see 200 supply rather than 70 to give a point of reference. Um, if we were watching the average master level player we would still probably see about 140 to 150 supply rather than 70. And that's all because of that opening that was so heavily crippled. Now some of that may be because of the pylon block and having to make six zerglings but if you're going to open 15 pool, that should be something you're super comfortable dealing with because it's so common these days. All right, so moving forward from here, we see saturation slowly trickling in here, but it's going to probably be another couple or three minutes before Rattlehead is able to go ahead and get on top of this. And we're seeing that gas float that I was talking about previously starting to come to fruition. And that's just because of the lack of minerals that result from this kind of a uh, opening. Also, we're seeing that not quite able to capitalize on the double evo chamber. Got the gas for it, but not quite the minerals. And not able to start enduring locusts quite yet either for the same exact reason. So this all I feel like is economically uh, tied. Um, so I, I know you were kind of hoping for critique on swarm hosts from what I could tell by you know how it was labeled and what you were saying when you were chatting on the... On the um, stream, but I gotta go back to it and say it's the fundamentals actually. Um, you could be going anything. Swarm host, Roach Hydra, Ling Bane, Ling Mito, whatever it may be. And these same fundamentals are going to hold you back. So, um, if you want to keep going Swarm host, then great. If you want to go anything else, then great. As long as you continue working on the things I just mentioned, you're going to see massive improvement to your play. Now, a few other things we can look at here, since um, I'm not familiar with our player, so it's good to cover all the bases. We do see control grouping, so that's great. And we see use of Static D. I'd like to see a Spore Crawler. I'd also like to see a Spine and a Spore at the Natural, just in case. And then finally, an a Overseer following your Queen's Round or a Spore hanging out in the main. These are getting way too much vision, especially for just idle over observers. But nevertheless, these are all little things. If you don't take anything from it... Um, I would say it's still not a big deal as long as you take the overarching theme away from theme out of this, which is get that early economy under control. Because we're now moving into the uh, mid to late game, and we're gonna see probably a, a max at ooh I would estimate 18 to 20 minutes 
And that's if Protoss gives you time for it, because Protoss has been ahead on economy this entire game. Um, even the spending is cleaner because he doesn't have that uh, mineral deficiency, uh, despite having significantly more probes. So I, I foresee that Protoss is going to go ahead and hit a few more Colossus here once he frees up this supply block. Once he gets up to three to four, he's going to go ahead and just push out um, because it's kind of one of those why not situations for him after a while. All right, Swarm host count uh, is decent enough that we could be aggressing. Now, Belshire Vistage, that's kind of a uh, hard thing to do because the run-by potential is so high. But nevertheless, especially if you're up against Robo, you definitely need to be moving out. Now, hypothetically speaking, if we were to factor both the economy improvement that I mentioned before and also moving out, you could be moving out with a good 16 to 20 Swarm Hosts and then also a healthy uh, Queen Hydra count also to support. So um, I definitely think this is the latest you would want to be pushing across the map, even on Belshire Vistage. But... I think that's going to help a lot. I'm getting a little bit of in-game lag. I made some changes to my stream. I'm trying to do 1080. If it's too much for my computer to handle, I'll have to tone it back. I'll have to just wait and watch, and hopefully this isn't lagging on the stream. If it is, I'm sorry for anyone watching on YouTube. I'm just going to have to upload it as is, but it won't be that way in the future. If, uh, if I get that trouble, I'll just go back down to 720. All right, so the Muta switch is interesting. It's a little late to be mixing in the Mutas. I would say generally you want to go Muta into Swarm Host rather than the other way around, especially since the Swarm Hosts haven't really been capitalized on. They're just kind of hanging out idle, which means you'd actually be better off with all those Swarm Hosts uh, into Mutas right now. Because as a defensive unit, I mean, we watch these Swarm Hosts. They're going to slowly stroll over. They're going to hope that they can get there in time, but they definitely won't. And once they do spawn the locust, he's going to have trouble actually dealing with, or he's going to, you're going to have trouble actually getting them into contact with his army if they're well managed. Now, if he just leaves them on attack move, you might get something done. But yeah, I don't feel like, yeah, I mean, it, optimally, I'd rather see these swarm hosts on the offensive right now while the mutas are keeping him busy. But I don't feel like the issue is the swarm hosts. I, I, I feel like if you had more swarm hosts, you'd feel more comfortable playing aggressively. And that wouldn't be, the passive play wouldn't be a factor. But it's just, you know, even though our Protoss player is playing way too passive, and definitely should just go ahead and move across the map and, and just win the game with the Colossus count he has, um, I just see an upward, uphill battle here for the entire game because of that opening. We are finally uh, ahead on economy, so that's good. The Mutas were able to get quite a bit done, and uh, we were able to get our third uh, saturated pretty healthily. So that's excellent. But that also means that I'd like to see these Swarm Hosts well across the map. You have almost that critical mass where you're going to be able to start doing some damage against Colossus-based compositions. Uh, and earlier on, when he was lower on Colossus count, even 12 is going to be fine. So if I can look at management specifically, I'd say the Muta management was really strong. The Swarm Hosts have pretty much been dead supply the entire game, so um, make sure you think of your Swarm host as a siege unit, not a defensive unit. They are terrible on the defensive. And when they are defending, um, it's the kind of situation where you need to be really strong at predicting your opponent's movements. Also, uh, try to think of Swarm Hosts as something that are wasted if they're not spawning. Now, I like that you're keeping them unburrowed, but you're keeping them unburrowed at the expense of ever, ever spawning units. You never want them unburrowed when they don't have an active spawn. Okay. Yeah, see, at this point, you could have burrowed them back here sent those up forward to check and see if you've got anything incoming, and then known where to position your Swarm Host for the next spawn. So that is the one big thing I would change about the Swarm Host use here as well, is to make sure that they're active. Make sure that you've got them uh, constantly spawning new locusts and constantly strolling around. And then the Lings, um, you know, no metabolic, I could harp on that, but, you know, that's that's kind of few and far between with, with the kind of overarching issues with the Swarm Host management and the macro. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. I mean, that engagement wasn't the greatest, but given that you were so far behind already, I'm not too terribly concerned with that. I think you would have had a um, better game throughout the earlier stages if uh, your economy had been where it needed to be and if the Swarm Hosts were a lot more aggressive. So not too terribly worried. But yeah, when you go Muta and Swarm Host, the reason that's successful is because you can force them to be in two to three places at once. 
So if you've got Swarm Host knocking at his third while Mutas are hitting the main and Nat until the cannons go up, he's going to need to probably split his Blink Stalkers and Sentries to deal with the Mutas while the Colossus and Immortal and Zealot hold off the Swarm Host. That means he has significantly less buffer. He's going to have to start managing his Colossi very carefully to make sure he doesn't lose any to the Locust. All the while, the Mutas are still going to probably get quite a bit done because he's uh, having his multitasking tax, so he won't always be able to keep up with the Mutas as well. Good transfusions there. I like that. That was good. Uh, just make sure right at this point you're shuffling back again. Okay, good. A little bit quicker on that would help a lot, but nevertheless, you only lost one in that pullback. Oh, this is this looks like a missed micro. That looked like it was just a case of just accidentally move forward, so that's that happens. Okay, so um, Rattlehead, I hope that gives you some stuff to work with. I would say, by and large, just get your um, get your opening strong. It almost looked like maybe you do a different CVP opening every time, so you weren't quite within your comfort zone. Try and standardize that. Try and get it to be something that you do every game. Run it 10 to 20 times versus AI if you need to, just to make sure you know what is a healthy drone count for you. And that doesn't necessarily have to be 60. That just has to be good. It has to be better than uh, you know 35 versus 55 probes on three base. So try and just always up the ante if it means you start at 40, and then the next time you run it, you get to 41 or 42. That's all it takes to improve in that regard. And then that means when you go into a live game, you can maybe hit to 55 or, 50 or 60, and then you've got something to work with when you move into your swarm house. Okay, to everyone watching on YouTube, thanks so much for watching.